Hey everyone, welcome back to Nail Art by Nessa. And if you're new here, thank you for joining us. This week I'm participating in the Spotlight Collab Challenge and this week's challenge is Kaleidoscope Nails. I teamed up with Sweet Tea Nails to choose this week's theme and we're really excited about it and hope you enjoy. There are five of us participating, Lisa Whitney who invited me to this challenge, Naomi Nails, and Sura Williams Queen Nails. So please check out all of our channels and see how we all create our own versions of Kaleidoscope Nails. So let me get started on my nails. So the first thing I normally do is just remove my polish, but this week I am gonna do something a little different. I'm actually going to remove all of the Builder Gel off my nails and cut down my nails so that I can add tips and start fresh. So sit back and enjoy and I will narrate what I'm doing as we go. To cut down and reduce the length of my nail, I decided to just go ahead and use my e-file. I decided not to use clippers just because I didn't want to crack my natural nail underneath and my natural nail had actually grown out to the entire length of the builder gel. So my natural nail was very long. This way I can just grind it down and then once I have it to a decent length, I will finish removing all the builder gel and then finish shaping and trimming down my nail using a regular hand file. Once I have removed the bulk of the builder gel, I switch over to an arbor band just so that I don't accidentally file into my natural nail. You want to be really careful with this and not remove your natural nail and go into your nail plate. That could be really painful. You don't want to do that. Only remove the gel. After I removed all of the gel and finished shaping my thumbnail, I went ahead and repeated this process on all my other nails. Once I had removed everything from all my other nails, I moved on to my cuticles and I started this by pushing back my cuticles and then I pulled out my e-file and I started with my round bit and I just used my round bit to sort of lift up the edges of my cuticle and to file down any rough bits at the tip of my fingers. Once I've done what I can with my round bit, I switch over to my pointy bit and I use this one to really get in there to make sure that I have no cuticle left on my nail plate. And that's what you see, all the white powder that is just cuticle that I'm filing off of my nail plate. Um, once I finish going in one direction, I will switch my file and go in the opposite direction just to make sure I really got everything off. You want to do this to make sure you have really good bonding with all of the gel products that you're going to apply to your nail. If you don't do this, you can have lifting. So you just want to be really careful to get all of your cuticle up and off that nail plate. Once I've done what I can with my e-file, I go in with my cuticle clippers and just trim away that dead skin.
And here is a look at my naked nails. I have to say it felt really weird to have completely bare nails. So I'm ready to start covering them up again. So I'm just sizing up the nail tips. And when you're sizing these up, you wanna make sure that they go from sidewall to sidewall. You don't wanna have any excess, but at the same time, you don't wanna have like empty space on the sidewall. You wanna make sure that it reaches from sidewall to sidewall. Once I found all the appropriate sizes, I start prepping my nail to apply the tips and I'm using Skip the Chip, it is a dehydrator. And then I go in and apply my primer. Now be really careful with your primers. People can develop allergies to these products. So when you apply this, make sure you're only applying it to your nail plate. It does tend to spread a little, so you don't wanna get too close to your cuticle. Um, if it gets into your cuticles or floods your cuticles, that's when you start developing allergies. So just be really careful. Once I was finished with that, I went in and applied a nice layer of base coat to all of my nails and then set that in my light. Now I need to prep the tip and you do this just by filing on the inside of the tip. This is just to rough up the surface so there's something for the products to bond to. And then I take my stuck drill glue and apply a little bit into the tip. I will hold the tip onto my finger and then hold my finger under the light to apply it and make it stick. Once I had all the tips attached, I just filed where the tip connects to my nail plate just to make a little bit smoother transition. And then I trimmed up all of the nails and filed them with my hand file just to perfect the shape. Now to finish my prep, I take my e-file and just buff over the surface of the nail tips so that the product will adhere. And then I will take a little bit of alcohol and just wipe over all of the nails to remove any excess dust and apply another layer of base coat all over the nail, including on the underside of the tip. And then set all of the nails in the light. Now we're finally ready to start decorating and I'm going to start with this black polish called Night and I'm going to apply it to most of the nail, leaving little like strips of clear just to create a little bit of a marbling effect. And I will do this for all of the nails and I do apply two layers so I set each layer in my light. Once all the black polish is set, I go in with this beautiful color by Born Pretty. It is called Touched Clouds and it is a beautiful holographic sparkle and I apply it to all of the clear spaces on my nails as well as a few random spots on the black.
I flash cured this glitter polish and then I brought out two of my magnetic polishes. Now I thought this was something that might be a little different that the other girls might not do. I chose two colors. They're very similar but one is a blue to a green shift. The other one is more of a blue to a purple shift. And I just created little strips on each nail, alternating colors and then creating a glow effect with the magnet and then setting each nail individually before starting the next nail. And this was just to create extra depth in the nail. Next up, I take a base coat and apply it to every nail, just a nice thin layer. This is just so I can start applying different glitters to the nail. Okay, so this is where we really start creating the kaleidoscope look and we're gonna start applying all these different sparkles. So the first one I pulled out there is little strips of holographic glitter and then the one in the middle is little tiny pieces of mylar and then we have the really large container with all the different colors. That one is holographic irregular shaped glitter. Now I'm taking the little strip glitter and applying it to all the clear spaces as well as a few random spots on the nail. And then I will take the irregular shaped glitter and just kind of randomly apply the different colors in different areas. There's no real rhyme or reason to it. I'm just trying to create different colors and reflections within the nail. After applying these colors all over the nails, I will now go in with my little teeny pieces of mylar. These are actually all the little teeny pieces that fell out of the container and were at the bottom of the bag when it arrived. And I'm just applying these all over the nail, but specifically targeting the cuticle area, the free edge and side walls, just because these areas we're obviously going to be filing it down a little bit deeper. And we wanna make sure that we have coverage of mylar all over the nail and these pieces of course will lie flat so once I was done with that I set it in the light and now I'm going to apply another layer of base coat so that we can apply another layer of glitters Next, I go in and apply some Galaxy Stars. These are a holographic glitter and I'm just applying them strategically around the nail. I'm placing about two to three on each nail depending on the nail. And I'm trying to target different sizes in these stars so that they're kind of look like they're at different depths. And then I go in with these little mylar cutout shapes and I'm applying more stars, but these are regular five pointed stars. And once again, I'm trying to sort of strategically place them, but it is difficult because they look pretty clear. It's really hard to see them on the nail. It's only when you move in certain ways that you actually see them. And I do take a couple little teeny moon shapes as well and place those in the nail. My theme for these nails even though they're kaleidoscope nails i was kind of going for a galaxy themed kaleidoscope it kind of made me think of that movie interstellar if you know what i'm talking about I really added a lot to these nails, um, but unfortunately you really don't see them all. So I feel like it doesn't hurt to add more than less because that way when you're finished your nails, you will at least see a few of the stars. 
So when I finally decided I had applied enough stars, I set it in the light and then I pulled out my builder gel. So we're using the Venalisa builder gel and I'm just going to do a nice thin layer over each nail. Um, I just wanted something a little thicker than the base coat just because um, with the stars now, I they're not all sitting perfectly flat and the mylar pieces that we're going to apply on top are random bigger shapes and stuff so they're not going to sit flat on the nail and I want to make sure that they really stick down to the nail. Now before I start applying the mylar I'm just adding some gold foil and I'm just randomly placing this all over the nail again. Um, just little bits. I don't want a lot because the gold foil tends to have like a sort of heavier look to it. And so once again, I'm just creating more depth with this foil. Okay, I'm finally ready for the larger pieces of mylar. So I'm going to select just a couple colors out of this container. I went with the red, the purple, and the blue. And then I also chose this bag of mylar that has random colors, but they're a little bit more of a clear uh, colored mylars. And with these mylars, I'm just going to pile them on there. I'm going to put on basically as much as I can with random pieces overlapping and coming out at all different angles you want them coming out at as many different angles as possible and overlapping this is what's going to create the kaleidoscope look once i'm happy with all the mylar pieces i will set that in the light When I was finally happy with how much mylar I had on my nails and the placement, I went ahead and set that in the light and then pulled out my builder gel. So I'm just going to slow it down a little bit here so that you can see how this product works. I had a request from a viewer to see how this Venalisa product flows. So here it is. Um, at this point, I had actually already applied a slip layer to this nail, so I'm sorry that I forgot to show you that. Um, so I just, once I applied the slip layer, I go in with a larger portion of the gel and sort of move that around and guide it to where I want it to be on the nail. Now it was a little bit more difficult with this nail in particular because with these nails you have little pieces of mylar sticking up at all angles which definitely impedes the flow of the gel and because it's so reflective it's really hard to see in some spots if you actually have any product there or not so I would go to apply a little bit more gel in a spot thinking oh there's nothing there and then it would turn out there was actually gel there it's just the way the light was reflecting from the pieces underneath so something to be aware of <laughs> um, so I apply the majority of the product to the apex and then guide it out from there once I'm sort of happy with it, I look at it from all angles and then I will turn my nail over so that gravity will help build up that apex. I once again look at it from all angles and once I feel like it looks pretty good, I set it in the UV light. Okay, so here it is again. I add a larger portion to the center of the nail and then just guide it out to where I want it to go. Once I feel like I have it pretty well placed, I will turn my finger over so that gravity will help me build the apex. And if I'm not quite happy with it, I will add a little bit more product, specifically targeting the apex area. And once I'm happy with that, I will set it in the light. Don't be afraid to add more product. If for some reason I feel like after I've set it in the light, I still need a little bit more product, I will go ahead and add it. You definitely want to have more product than not enough because the last thing you want to do when you go to sculpt your nail is to accidentally file away some of your design. So just make sure you have enough product on there.
After encapsulating all of my nails and setting them in the light, I wiped off that inhibition layer and then I was ready to start sculpting. So I tried to keep this in frame as much as possible, but I do find it really difficult. I am still really new to sculpting nails. So I start with my side walls and then move into my cuticle area. After I've finished my cuticle area, or mostly I work towards the tip of the nail, I do file over the entire nail, but I'm very careful not to file away too much at the apex. Um, you know, if the apex is really high, then, you know, file away what you need to, but just be really careful with that area. You don't want to take away any strength. Um, like I said, I am still really new to this, so I do find this part really difficult, especially with all of the reflective parts in the nail. I've only been sculpting nails since November when I first did my Builder Gel nails. I do what I can with my e-file, first using my more aggressive tip and then using my arbor band. And then once I've kind of figured I've done what I can with that, I go in with my hand file and just perfect the shape. I went ahead and sculpted every other nail off camera and created my thumbnail, sculpted that, and then I was ready for my top coat. So I just wiped off all of the dust and debris from shaping my nails and applied a nice even layer of top coat and set that in the light. Okay, so here is my final look, and I really love the way these nails turned out. I think they're one of the most beautiful sets of nails I've ever done, and I'm really proud of the sculpting I did on these nails. I think the shape turned out really great. So let me know what you think in the comments. I've added a few videos at the end here where I am outside walking and in different areas so that you can see the different reflections in the nails. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification and please check out all the other girls videos I'm going to have links to their videos in my description box below and Please come back next week where we will have another collab video Thank you for joining me for this video and I'll see you next week. Bye